Magician loses the signed playing card in the deck. In the deck. At his command, at his command, the signed playing card is seen to penetrate the glass table. I am Daniel Madison. This is Breach. Daniel Madison, welcome back and thanks for being here. Charlie Madison and I truly appreciate you choosing to spend a bit more time with us today. So, thank you are gonna love, love, love this one today. This one is a special one. It's gonna be a long video too, so I won't waste too much time in this introduction. This is my answer. These are my solutions to taking a signed playing card and have it penetrate a glass table. I've got quite a few different ideas, quite a few different solutions that all make it seem like real magic, like that playing card is really, actually, genuinely going through a glass table. Get yourself a deck of playing cards. You're gonna need a few other bits too, but we'll get into that. You're gonna love it. I'm Daniel Madison, this is Breach. In this video, I'm gonna teach you a few different versions. We're gonna start with the gimmicked version and then I'm gonna teach you two sleight of hand variations that only require good sleight of hand, which I'm gonna teach you, oh my God! If you can't deliver my frozen sausages on time, don't expect me to bring you business ever again. Do you understand? That's exactly what I wanna hear. Thank you for sorting that out. All right, I love you too. See you next week, granddad. Right, so what back on track, what have we got in front of us? I've got blue tack, which is also white tack. I usually go for white tack, but it doesn't really make a difference because nobody's gonna see this. This is just kind of sticky tack. I've got some skizzers, got some skizzers. I've got a sharpie, I've got some double-sided sticky tape. Any magician who doesn't have double-sided sticky tape in one of his drawers is not a real magician, and that's a fact. I have a deck of playing cards, which is the performance deck of playing cards. This is what we're going to use. There are duplicates in here, Nine of Clubs, King of Diamonds, we'll get to that. They are for the sleight of hand only versions. And I'm going to take some playing cards out of this deck. This is the same deck as this, same back design, same faces, etc. And I'm only going to use the sevens. So I'm going to take all four sevens out and we're going to use these to make our gimmicks. Now the, the magnets, these are called, let me get this right, these are called Neodymium. 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 These are Neodymium magnets and I'll leave a link to these in the video description. These are the thinnest and most powerful magnets I could find 
uh, this thin. Make sure you've got all these things. Um, the sausage is probably the most important part. You know, it's for comfort. And I choose to cuddle a sausage. The construction of the gimmick. I'm gonna use the sevens, and we're gonna use the seven of clubs. I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna take two of my neodymium magnets, whatever they're called, and I'm gonna put one towards the top, one towards the bottom, just here. I'm gonna stick those in place with double-sided sticky tape directly in the middle, like this. So I don't want to press down too hard on the sticky tape because I don't want those circles, the shapes of the magnets to cause an image, an indentation on the back, which is going to give away, which could potentially give away the fact that this is a gimmick. So I'm going to handle this very delicately. And I'm going to put a little bit on either side because this is eventually going to look like one single playing card. So there we have it. We have a Two magnets, one here, one here, and three strips of sticky tape. Now I'm gonna peel off the sticky tape and I'm gonna stick the seven of hearts on top of it. So, and we're done. So I'm gonna take the seven of hearts, I'm gonna place it very carefully on top. So I've been very careful, very delicate, sticking the seven to the front. I stick mainly, I press mainly over the magnet to make sure that they're stuck in place. And now I'm gonna just put this down and just gently add pressure from the middle outwards. Now, this is our first breach gimmick. Looks like one playing card. Doesn't feel like one playing card. I will tell you that now, but don't worry about that. I'm gonna take the seven of spades, which is gonna be hidden, and I'm gonna line it up perfectly on top of the seven of hearts. Now I'm gonna take two more magnets, and I'm gonna drop them. One on top, one on bottom, one on bottom. Because of this, because I've dropped it, the magnet, the pull of the magnet decided for me which way up these magnets need to go. These are now exactly as they need to be. If you do these two separate, you build the two gimmicks separate, you might get the magnets the wrong way around. Then when you try to put them together, they actually push each other away, which causes us a pretty big problem. So I'm going to uh, time lapse this while I make this gimmick in the exact same way. Three strips of tape, seven of diamonds on top of it, so it looks like one playing card. See you in a minute. Now in this position, I can pull both gimmicks away from each other, and I now have two perfect breach gimmicks. Let's move over to the glass table, and I'll explain to you exactly how we achieved breach. The only way is through. If I take the seven of hearts, I'll put the seven of diamonds face down on the glass. If I take the seven of hearts and press it up against the bottom of the glass, the magnets are trapped and the seven of hearts is now hidden underneath the table. All we have to do now, all I have to do now is lift the seven of diamonds, causing the magnets to separate. And this causes the seven of hearts to drop and appear to have penetrated the glass. It's quite obvious when you think about it. When somebody goes away after seeing this trick, they're gonna quite easily backtrack. There are only a few ways that it could have happened. And this is my this is my problem in general with card through glass. I'm, not, I'm yet to see a card through glass that makes me go, how the hell did he do that? It's all too easy to work out. So as with everything that I do, as with all the deceptions that I approach, I try to give as much freedom as possible to the participant. And I'd like to make it look like I've got very little control. And the easiest way to do this is by taking my hands off as much as possible. Now what's good about this, although this very version relies on a force, we have to force a seven of hearts or a seven of diamonds. What's good about this, because we're using a gimmick and the actual seven of hearts from the deck, we get this beautiful moment where we could potentially load and set up breach before the participant is even ready for it. So we can do it without anybody looking. If we have the seven of diamonds to the bottom of the deck, the breach can make it to the, at the bottom. We're gonna have the other seven of hearts lined up on top of it in place. So this is our setup. We're, we're now set up and we're gonna force the seven of hearts on our participant. She's gonna take the playing card and she's gonna be looking at it. This allows me to do a few different things. One, I can set up the trick. I can set up while nobody's looking. People are gonna be looking, but it's, it's a down moment. It's an off moment where nobody really cares because the selection is the most important part and it's currently being held, held hostage by Susan Sausage. So 
once my guy's been forced and been looked at, I go to work. I separate the bottom two playing cards. So the seven of hearts is separate from the seven of diamonds. I get into a palm. Now, this isn't even necessary. I don't need to palm it because nobody's looking. I could just do this and then I'm set up, I'm ready. That's the method. That's usually how I would do it. I'm going to separate the seven of hearts. I'm going to have it in a gambler's cop and it's going to go down by my side. It looks like this. It's just like this. I'm going to put the deck on the table as I do it. My hand, this hand, my left hand with the held out seven of hearts is going to reach underneath and hit the glass at the same time like this. Now the image of it, when we see somebody doing this, if you were to watch me put a deck down like this, it's just a simple action. It's an, an unconscious action that we don't need to register in our head. It's a non moment, nothing's happening. So it's not going to register. If I do this, nobody registers. If I do this, nobody registers nobody's looking nobody cares at this point don't do it like a magician don't do anything like a magician you're a human being who does tricks who has playing cards so inspect the glass like a human being at this point nobody has a clue what's going on a card has been selected that's the end of it nobody knows what's coming so now i can offer a bit of foreshadowing and a bit of inspection a bit of uncertainty in my person which allows them to think back and think or, or allows them to observe what I'm doing in a way that they're thinking hold on I think I know what's going to happen here or what's he doing I, I want to look human is what I'm trying to say so I do this I do this um, okay so give me a card back give me the seven so I'm kind of I'm just inspecting the glass it looks like I'm inspecting the glass to inspect the glass I needed both hands, so I had to put the deck down. For, for the people who are eyes on, all eyes on, this is how I do it. Deck goes down. Now all the tension's on the glass, all the tension's on the table, and my hand's doing this, and me looking. I'm looking everywhere other than at the deck of playing cards. In order to inspect the glass, I had to put the deck down, and I'm done. I know that the magnets are strong enough, especially that there are two of them, that I can now take the playing cards and move them like this. The card sticks the seven of hearts comes along for the journey, comes along for the ride. So I can move the, the deck around very freely, very easily. This sells the deception so much. What a beautiful thing. If now we're loaded, I can even move the playing cards. What a beautiful thing. And this is one of the things that's gonna make this magic, this experience even more magical. There's something really nice about seeing the journey of that seven, about seeing how the seven goes into the deck and then pops through the table right at the last minute. So this is why I'd usually go for this. I would spread the cards out a little bit. I'm just gonna mess the cards up a little bit. Um, we take the seven. Susan, can you put both your hands like this underneath the glass? Can you put them underneath where the deck is? At this point, when you say that, every mother F swear word in that room knows what's gonna happen. This is the moment, so it is important that we have not put our hands under the table. So when I say, Susan, put your hands under the table, don't do this, don't say, Susan, do this, because that's a backtracking moment where they're gonna reverse engineer and think, that's when he did it, that's when he did the secret. So we wanna go put your hands like this, put them both under the table, underneath the playing cards, a bit further down. So we want her to be about here so that everybody can see the drop, see the fall. Bear in mind, I've still got the seven of hearts here. I've still got the playing card. So I'm gonna do this now. I'm gonna use the seven to mock, to separate those magnets. So I go underneath like this. I make it look like it's going in anywhere, but I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom. This allows me to have full control over the magnet. I can now push that underneath, push my fingers underneath the seven. I know now that this is lifting the magnet away. Now it's in my full control. I have both hands here. Now we can do it on cue on we can do it whenever we want we could say three two one now and it'll, it'll happen that's kind of up to us the way we perform i like this idea of making it look like a struggle making it look like i'm pushing the glass and then i can look up at susan she looks up at me and it happens i love the idea i think the idea is beautiful that the deception is felt rather than just seen any opportunity you have to put the magic in susan's hand in your participant's hand, you have to go go for it. You have to lap that up, it's a beautiful thing. I love the idea that even if she's not looking at this, 
her hands are there so she can feel it. There's something magical about that connection where I'm looking Susan in the eyes, Susan Sausage, I'm in love with you. You're giving this human connection eye to eye and then all of a sudden they feel this something lands in their hand. Oh my God, what a moment. They have a look, they turn it over. It's a seven of hearts. At this moment, they are holding a gimmick. They are holding your breach gimmick. I've never run away from this. I've never assumed that she's gonna figure out that this is a gimmick because it goes like this. It drops into her hand like this. It's up to her to reveal it now. Depending on what type of, what kind of participant you have. Some participants will catch it and go, oh my God, ah! And they'll run away with it. They'll turn it over themselves straight away to see it. But not everybody. If we, if we put it in their mind to not look yet, because they're gonna catch this card and it's gonna, they're gonna be in shock. They're gonna be, <gasps> whoa. Also, participants, they don't, they don't like the responsibility of, of being involved in a trick. Not inertly, they don't like it. So when they catch one of your playing cards, they're waiting for your instruction. As magicians, we are instructive people. We give commands, they do what we say, we say what they do. It lands in their hand, they wait for our instruction. Not everybody's gonna turn that card over. So Susan, more than likely, is gonna be stay here like this and have the card in her hand and go, oh, if that's my card, I'm gonna do a poo on the floor. Do you know what I mean? There's this anticipation of the playing card being face down. It's in her hand, so there's no way I can switch it now. If this is the card. Now I can say, Susan, slowly pull your hands out and very carefully show it to everybody, just lift it up, turn it over. Oh my God! Nobody, she's not thinking about what a playing card feels like. She's not thinking about how much a playing card weighs. She's not thinking to herself, hold on, it feels like there's something in the middle of that. Because she's lost in the magic. She's experiencing the most beautiful magic moment. It's during the reactions, it's during all that. That is the moment when I can now switch this card for the bottom card of the deck, which is the seven of hearts because I pushed it underneath. Let me do it as if it's the performance. So the seven of hearts on the deck, she's looking at seven. I take the seven and I say, look, there's no way that this card could have gone through the table. It couldn't have gone through the glass. Now I've loaded the actual seven of hearts into my left hand and a palm. The magnets are here on the seven of diamonds, so now I'm gonna go like this, and it looks like I've just moved it off of the table into my hand. Meanwhile, it's stuck to the magnet at the bottom of the deck. Could be something like this. I take the card off of Susan. Look, Susan, the playing card cannot go through the table. Look, knock on the glass, you'll see it can't go through. So if you saw what I did there, I've just put the magnet seven of hearts on top of the deck, I said, look, we can't go through the glass and then I put the deck down face up. So she still sees the seven parts, which she can now inspect. At this point, if you're worried about people, anybody inspecting the playing cards, anybody looking or checking, we simply, we can just do a shuffle, stick those magnets together, cop away those playing cards and everything can be inspected. The face up variation of breach allows me to do two things. It allows me to show you one, the face up variation, which is a beautiful thing because you see the seven of hearts here and then you see it, visually see the seven of hearts fall through the table. It also allows me to teach you uh, one of my favorite forces of all time, the dribble force, which allows us to be set up before the trick even begins, which is a beautiful thing. I have the seven of diamonds breach card on top of the deck. I have the seven of hearts breach card in my palm. I put the deck down and I'm good to go pretty much. There's one thing that we have to do for this trick to prepare. We have to prepare the seven of hearts for the force. So I'm gonna go about 10 playing cards down. Um, give or take 10 playing cards down. And we use the king of diamonds. I'm gonna end drop the playing card toward me. Just slightly, just so that I can get access to it with my thumb when I put the playing cards down. This is so I can get to the seven, you will see in a second. So I'm gonna take the playing cards, I'm gonna put them down on the table. Seven of heart hero. I'm gonna load the seven underneath. Again, if I'm worried about anybody looking at this moment or judging me while my hand's on the table, I can refer it back to me just checking the glass and then standing back. I can now move the playing cards just like before. The magnet's gonna to stick to the bottom and I can move the playing cards a bit further into the middle of the table. So I say, soon I'm gonna show you another trick but we need a playing card selected. So I'm gonna dribble the cards to the glass and you're gonna call stop at any point. 
Now I go to collect the playing cards. I go pick it up like this, and that's the break. It's a huge break, but it's away from Susan. It's toward me, so I'm not worried about anybody seeing it. I pick the deck up, and as soon as I pick it up, I start dribbling. Now this allows me to keep playing cards on the table and keep those magnets connected. So as soon as I lift up, I start dribble. So I turn it into a lift. Now my instructions to Susan are to call stop at any point. Wherever she calls stop, I'm gonna separate, I'm gonna let go of that break. So I say, Susan calls stop. She says stop. We, we drop at the seven. And then straight away before giving any options, I, I call it, I say, okay, seven of heart. Because I'm leaving no options at this point by doing that. I'm not leaving them the option to say, oh no, I'll some more cards. Oh, I didn't want that one. We're just making it clear that this is the playing card and it's done, it's performed so casually that we don't really care. It doesn't matter. Everybody can see the seven. It really doesn't matter which card was selected for this trick. The cards didn't even leave, leave the table. At this point, we're golden. Look what we've achieved. We have the deck on the table. It's already loaded with a card underneath the deck and I have a selection, seven of hearts. Now all I've got to do is perform. So I'm gonna dribble the cards a little bit like this, make them messy. And at this point, I'm gonna show the seven and say, Susan, put your hands under the table. She's gonna put both her hands underneath. Again, I don't put my hands underneath. I take the seven. Now you can see everything happening. I'm gonna pretend it's going into the middle like this a few times. And then I'm gonna go all the way underneath once again, my fingers are underneath the seven, and all I have to do is lift whenever I'm ready. I've now got a whole deck in my grip. As soon as I'm ready, I lift. They see the seven of hearts from my hand, which I was just holding, penetrate the table and land in Susan's hand. Once again, the same advice as last time. She might, you might be worried about her inspecting this playing card. She's not going to. Look at the position that I'm in now. I'm holding the seven of hearts here at the bottom of the deck. I'm gonna take the seven back, the gimmick seven of hearts back. The way that I do this is very slow, very fairly because we're talking about the table more than the seven. Look, the seven, there's no way it could have gone through the glass. And I'm done, I'm clean. I've got both magnets here. I can now ga take gamblers, cop those away, put the deck on the table and everything can be inspected. Now, I know that a lot of people a lot of people don't like watching these long videos and there's probably a lot of people falling off of this video already. So if you're here, if you're still here watching funk and you're waiting for the right time, this is the golden moment. This is the signed playing card, a freely selected and signed playing card through table. Pay close attention. We're only gonna use one gimmick for this, one of the breach gimmicks. This is the seven of hearts. I've got rid of the seven of diamonds in case it interferes with the trick in any way. We've got the seven of hearts. On the back of it, I have an extra little gimmick. So this is a magnet, a neodidabodum, whatever the word is, neodium uh, magnet, just one. I put an X on the back of it. I'll, I'll explain that in a second. And on the other side of this is blue tack, is the sticky tack stuck to the back a tiny bit. This allows me to stick it to playing cards without it falling off. So we're gonna have this gimmick stuck to the back of the seven of heart. So it's now stuck to the gimmick, to the magnet inside the seven of heart. You know me by now, you know how hands off I am. I will keep this gimmick in a gambler's cop. I give the deck to Susan Sausage and I say, go through, have a look, shuffle them, Whichever playing card you want, take it out, write your name on it. I don't even want to touch the playing cards. That's how hand, hands off we should be as magicians. We should give that amount of freedom to our participants. This is so much more beautiful than a force. This is a completely free choice and it's signed. Like as she's signing, I take the playing cards back because she's finished with them. She's signing the two of hearts now. I now load this card into the deck and I want it to be on top. So I load it to the bottom and then I shuffle, very simple overhand shuffle, get it to the top of the deck. I'm gonna knock that magnet off into my hands. No, nobody's watching at this point either, so there's no secretiveness to it. I just knock it off, it's now in my hand. I can put the deck down. The magnet is so small, so easy to hide. It's at my fingertips now, so it's at my second fingertip. I'm now gonna take the two of heart, the sign two of hearts, and I'm gonna stick this magnet to the back of it in front of everybody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it up. I pass it into this hand where the magnet is and now I can just stick it to the back of the card with my thumb. So there it is. So now it's stuck to the back of the two hearts. 
the deck's already face up on the table. I take the two of hearts, I put it on top of the, of the deck like this. I'm now gonna take the deck and I'm gonna shuffle it face up. So they're gonna see their playing card shuffle. What I'm really doing is I'm just shifting it to the bottom of the deck, to my hand basically. And I'm also gonna keep the seven of hearts in place. So I shuffle the card to the back one. It now sticks to the magnet. So the two of hearts is now stuck to the magnet. And now I can shuffle the cards on top of it, keeping those playing cards held in place with finger two and finger three. Now, before I go into a gambler's cup with that two of hearts, I, I do have the freedom, and I don't worry too much about this, but you do have the freedom to push the magnet more onto the back of the card, squashing that blue tack, Just making sure the magnet's not gonna pop off when you go into a gambler's cup, because the gambler's cup is gonna bevel the card slightly, and there is a chance, there's a possibility that the magnet might just pop off, and then, you're a bit stuck. So I go into a gambler's cop, and we've already been through this earlier in this video, I won't repeat myself, the way that we load the playing card onto the table is exactly the same with the gimmicks as it is with the signed playing card because the magnet is aligned, it's already aligned for us. So I put the deck down, I start inspecting the glass and take all the tension away from the cards. It could cause the two of hearts to bevel like this because there's only one magnet. But this is all about the way we load it. If we load it correctly, if we load it straight, consciously aware that the deck has to be aligned with it then we're good if we slide this way look how the two comes out again this is just about being aware and being conscious of the fact that we're only using one magnet so if we're going to do that just move slowly and move forward i like the idea of pushing down so i'm pushing onto the glass so this hand my left hand gives the impression as well as my body's moving forward and down it looks like i'm putting pressure onto it really my thumbs at the back and my fingers are working at the side and the front so as soon as i know that it's it's fallen free i release everything i stand back we can see the playing card we can see the same playing card the first thing anybody wants to do now is inspect right so people are going to want to inspect the good thing about this we don't really have to prove anything because they can see it's susan's card susan can see that it's Susan's card. She can see her own card. She doesn't really need to inspect it. If anything, we want to inspect the table and the deck. So I want to make sure that I'm the one who goes to get the card at this point. So I go down to get the two of hearts and it's dead simple that before I'm even back to the top, I've already peeled the magnet off and handed the card out. The magnet stuck to my thumb. I can stick it to a table. I can stick it to a close by any bit of metal. I can flick it over my shoulder if I want. I can just get rid of it. The only discrepancy left at that point is the seven of dime, the seven of hearts with magnets in it, but we're not too worried about that because this is now the subject of inspection. This is what people are gonna wanna look at now that I've kind of taken it and said, look, check it out. This allows me to take the deck into my hand, peel away the seven of diamonds, and then just keep hold of the deck until I'm ready to just say, check everything if you want. So gimmicks aside, we're gonna look at how we can achieve this with no gimmicks, with just playing cards. And I'm gonna sign both King of Diamonds. I have two King of Diamonds. I'm gonna sign them both with a signature, right? So it's not mine. I'm just gonna make a signature up, right? Just a scribble. Now I'm gonna copy that. Now the wonderful thing about this, this is an idea that was devised and developed for uh, a TV concept, a concept that would supposed, that is supposed to only really work on television, actually works in real life, which is a wonderful thing that Gianni Vox and I developed together, which is called Lithium. So I have two King of Diamonds, both with the same signature on. I'm gonna force one of these King of Diamonds on my spectator, on Susan Sausage, right? I'm gonna force a King of Diamonds on her. I'm gonna do the same dribble force. I'm gonna say, take the card, don't let me see. You can show it if you want. Um, in fact, it doesn't matter if we see this card. So she takes the playing card. There's a Sharpie nearby. I'm gonna buy a bit of time by talking and take the playing card back. And then I'm gonna show everybody. I'm like, okay, so we have, Susan chose this, the King of Diamonds. Uh, it's been signed. Uh, we're gonna use the King of Diamonds. I'm gonna show you something impossible. That one little sentence that you slip into this, Susan chose the King of Diamonds. It has been signed. This is the true statement that Susan's going to agree with. But to everybody else watching, to the audience, they're gonna think that that means that Susan has signed this playing card. This is Susan's signed playing card. And it puts that idea in their mind and it sets the story up. After the event, the story's gonna be, Susan chose a playing card, then she signed it, and then it went through the table. This is a beautiful thing that we can apply to any trick that uses duplicates. So I have one on top, 
I've just signed the King of Diamonds. I've signed the King of Diamonds. I've forced it on Susan Sausage. Everybody believes this is her signed playing card. Now, to penetrate that card through the table. For the first version of Breach, I'm going to put the card on the table like this. I'm going to slap my hand on top of it and it's going to penetrate the glass and land on top of the deck just like this. Now I'm going to leave it there for a moment before bringing it out to show everybody and handing it out for full inspection and this can be completely inspected. So that's the first version of Breach. In the second version of Breach, and arguably my favorite version, we take the signed playing card back off of Susan Sausage and we go straight underneath the table and bring my other hand on top of the glass and in a split second the playing card is seen to pop up through the glass at which point everything can be completely and thoroughly inspected. Now version one is a little bit more difficult than the second version but they both lead into each other and I like this idea that we, we can clean up by executing one after the other by doing them twice. This trick does lend itself to that. Just one note, your signatures make sure that they're both the same way up. Um, because that could become a discrepancy if one goes through the table like this if they're, if they're the wrong way around just something worth uh, mentioning so we, the first version we have the king of diamonds on top we can start with this version and then straight away go into the next version so the king of diamonds goes on the table here we're going to slap down on it at which point our only ambition our only aim here is to completely cover the king of diamonds with our hand maybe our hands aren't big enough to cover playing cards and I'm sorry for those people who can't do that. Uh, maybe you have your own way of doing this. If you do, let me know in the comments. I'm always eager to learn and find variations. I think with the trick, Abyss, 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 if you look at that on my website, you could apply that to this trick. This, this playing card could have Abyss loaded onto it. So when I hit it, it actually does vanish and at which point we can do the flipper move which is how we achieve this trick. We have the other King of Diamonds on top of the deck. I have a break underneath the top card as I pull down. Air gets trapped inside and it causes the card to pull upwards and because our thumb's in the way, it turns face up. So don't try to rush it. This is a, this is a move that doesn't happen super fast. You gotta just let that card turn over its own speed. So when we combine those two things, if I slap this card down and with good timing and make the top card turn face over, because of the way this card moves, it looks like it could have fallen through the, and landed on the top like on top of the deck naturally. Because of that, all the eyes are drawn away from this playing card. The playing card face up here. I've got this card covered up. I let it linger for a little bit so people can see that it's clearly there. And now I line the king up on top of the deck and I drop this card on top of the deck on my way out and I can flip the top card off, put the deck down. This can be inspected. I can then take the deck and get rid of this if I want to. I don't always like cleaning up at that point. So I go under the table, I hit, it goes through, and now I push it back up through the glass and it can be inspected. This offers that illusion. Hold on, did it even go through? Having this playing card hidden in a palm, in a gambler's flat palm like this, so I'm just clipping it in my thumb, or you can have it in a classic palm. I go under the table. Now I can bring the palm's playing card into play while I get ready with this hand. And what I'm doing under the table, I'm using my pinky to pull that playing card all the way under the deck. Now, what's nice about this, I don't have to do this really quickly. I can do it slowly, I can take my time. Because if you watch this, if I do it really slowly now, that sound, that sound could have been the sound of the card going through the table. So put these two ideas together and we have something truly magical. We have the King of Diamonds face up on top of the table. Face up, I'm gonna slap it. Come on, you slapper. I slap the King, I execute the flippant move. I let it sink in for a moment. Now I bring it underneath my hand slightly and as I peel it away like this, as I start to peel it back, as soon as I know it's gone out of sight, I lift my hand and it looks like it's popped through the table at this point. The King of Diamonds is curled underneath and it's in a perfect position for a gambler's cop. It's already there. Now I can just take the deck, put it down, and I'm done. I've got the other King of Diamonds here. I've taken it away and we have achieved Breach Outro. That was Breach. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you love it. And if you perform it, if you have your own variation, if you have ideas, I'm going to be in the comments section after this video. So 
Let me know, I'll be there. Thanks so much for spending some time with me and Charlie today. We really do appreciate it. And the last video did so well, and the response has been so incredibly overwhelming and warming. So if you haven't seen it yet, head over and watch the video before this. It's a very special one. And the advocate itself, which I talked about in the previous video, is gonna change the shape, change the direction quite a lot of my YouTube videos. Now that we have a solution, now that you have a solution to giving the deck of playing cards to Susan Sausage and saying, just name any playing card, rather than spreading the cards and saying, oh please, pick any playing card, don't let me see. Now with the advocate, we can say, take the deck, choose any playing card you want, it doesn't matter which one. So the advocate's gonna be an integral part of every video, not every video to come, but most of them. So if you haven't got it yet, if you haven't checked out yet, head over to my website, madison.com cards check the last video link in video description i'll be back very soon i have so many more videos on the way and i have a huge surprise so make sure you stay close to youtube over the next few days make sure you subscribe so you get my notification bell going ding, 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 every time i drop a new tutorial i'm danny madison that's charlie madison thanks for spending some time with us really appreciate it see you next time